Well, morning guys. It's 4.16 in the morning West Coast time. It's the 5th of February 2024. What you're hearing in the background is the local station KTLA Channel 5 doing traffic reporting. But they're also talking about uh, the hazards we've been having over the past uh, several hours. We've been warned about the storm and now it's making its debut and it's flooding out a few streets here and there. If people are hearing about the uh, San Fernando Valley getting flooded out, no, only certain portions of it. There are portions in Sun Valley that are getting a little bit flooded out because of the uh, topography of the streets out there, not to mention the uh, not to mention the uh, gutters out there getting flooded out. And people are freaking out because of the uh, Lake Balboa area. Well, it's the Sepulveda Dam area. It's supposed to be flooded. They're going to be talking about it. I'm going to be capturing more weather information when it comes up and just putting it into here just for the record. We also have snow happening as well. We're up in the higher elevations above 7,000. Uh, we have uh, observation areas. We also have uh, well, let's see, areas in the mountains that people go for regarding um, beautiful views. And not to mention our, tele our, uh, our radio antennas out there that we have to worry about having the maintenance on them all the time. Um, Mount Wilson's roads are a bit well, they're closed off because of uh, the snow being piled in over there, and they closed them down due to precautions before the storm kicked in. But getting back to Lake Balboa, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you would turn to your computers or tablets or whatever kind of electronic devices you're using, and you put in your Google Maps, when you get into the search engine, Type out San Fernando Valley. For me, I just type in maps because I've been doing it all the time. Now, for mine, it just automatically goes for the default of where my neighborhood is in Roseman, California, up in the high desert region. Uh, that's not what I'm asking for. What I'm asking for, folks, uh, is put it on layers. I want you to take a look at the geography and the topography and the actual. Get a good picture of it. Now, I'm going to point you to the 405 freeway area. That's the freeway going north and south, almost right in the middle of the uh, San Fernando Valley. I want to show you something. <coughs> Lower quadrant of the San Fernando Valley, south, you know, south area of it, but it's in the northern region of the mountains in that area. You'll see this green patch. That's a golf course, by the way. But that's also part of the dam area that we have. Scroll into it a little bit closer, and you'll see the green patch, and you'll see a lot of words in the damn thing. Now keep this in mind, that this whole area had been designed a long time ago to be a flood zone. There is a uh, spillway uh, that we have out there right next to the 405 freeway. That area is designed to be the watershed for the San Fernando Valley. Now, because we've had so much urban flooding in different areas, we have different low-lying areas of it, most of the water is going into that area. They shut it all down. Let me uh, show you where they shut it down at. Now, you notice where the residential areas and the businesses are. 
these are the streets that they normally would shut down on purpose and they always have to have uh, you know there's my coffee right there give me one sec I'm gonna put this on pause actually I'm gonna turn the news on let you listen to it <laughs> Mr. T spent this, his morning at a fire station in Sherman Oaks yesterday, making sure he and his neighbors were ready for all of this rain. For anyone still in need of sandbags, the L.A. Fire Department provides free, ready-to-fill sandbags year-round at all your neighborhood fire stations, although you might understand they're a bit busy this morning. All right, let's get back to Henry. Uh, you know, I've met Mr. T a couple of times. I've been fortunate to meet him at the uh, Skechers Friendship Walk that they do every October. He's a big part of that. And uh, he is a he is a loyal viewer of the show. So he's probably out there watching us right now. So Mr. T, and he does a lot of work in the community. Such a nice guy. Really nice man. Uh, and uh, so we appreciate that. I pity the fool <laughs> that doesn't watch K25. Well, it's <laughs> funny because, yes, we did air that. He said that. Uh, yeah, and he got all the names right too which sometimes doesn't happen we know you're not okay oh henry i love you i watch you every night <laughs> That's... don't work at night anyway max doppler here we go we have a lot of rain let's get serious because it is serious i talked about this earlier orange county la county that appears to be where the atmospheric river is set up and remember that is fueling the added amount of rain that we will get out of this system. So Santa Barbara, Venturi counties, yes, you're getting rain, but you're almost just getting rain from the storm. This is what we would get if we didn't have the AR component to it. It would be a decent storm, but a storm that we might typically get here in the month of February. Typically, we'll get a couple of inches of rain in February. And this particular storm is going to do more than that for the entire month, what would be normal. We'll get in, 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 in just today alone. But for those of you in through Orange County and L.A. County, you're getting that atmospheric river. And I tried to explain this because you get a lot of erroneous information. These storms from uh, Hawaii, they're not storms from Hawaii. And it's abundance of water vapor that sits over those tropical areas and when we tap into it we take an existing storm as we do to the north and then we add this vapor that fuels more rain it's like a fire to the north and we're putting some lighter fluid on it and that's what's happening so these areas will get the worst but of course i'm covering weather for everybody so when i sit there and say hey we have the chance to get one to three inches of rain for the coast and the valleys, and I often agree with you, that's frustrating. That's a big range. Well, the one-inch range is probably more for Santa Barbara, Ventura counties. But then we start talking that two- to three-inch rain when we accumulate all this rain. Now we can fine-tune it and say it's more L.A. Orange County. And remember, there's always going to be outlying areas that may get a thunderstorm or a stronger cell that sticks around, so you could exceed that. So when we talk about all of these areas that could see flooding and problems and things of that nature, remember, it may not be bad in your area, but it will be bad in others. And the hard part is which areas are going to get the abundance of it. I can tell you, I believe it's L.A. and Ventura, excuse me, L.A. and Orange County, because that is where that plume continues. Here we are into the afternoon, and L.A. County still getting hammered, still getting hammered in through Orange County. Notice off towards the east, yeah, eastern Riverside, San Bernardino County, you'll get some rain, but you are going to come back and say, whoa, that forecast, what an overblown forecast. We had a half an inch, an inch of rain. No, you won't be saying that if you live in L.A. and Orange County. Remember, this is a big area to forecast, and we need to give you the worst-case scenario. We don't want anybody caught off guard. So Orange County, a lot of rain, gusty winds, too. Thanks. And the chance of flooding continues into the evening and through tomorrow. The greatest risk will be during the morning hours today and through early afternoon. San Fernando Valley, you have a chance of thunderstorms. We get to Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, we'll see the chance of shade showers taper off. We'll have some, but they will be much more isolated. Today, it's all about that blanket rain with L.A. and Orange County getting the worst of it. Ginger, we'll send it over to you.
Yeah, so much for us to cover. Of course, we want to start you off with a live look at our cameras. I mean, I just opened the door here, and the rain is still very heavy. But if your plans take you along the five freeway, so the camera sits, we put it right at about Anaheim Boulevard. I mean, the conditions throughout all of our county is very tough. You see it. Camera freezes every once in a while, starts up again. We don't have a lot of volume. We have, of course, the rain that is here. 14 North at Soledad Canyon Road or just past it. So until further notice, a hard closure of the carpool two left lanes after a semi, a water tanker truck actually crashing into the center divider, 110 South at Florence Avenue. They're holding those lanes. I mean, the crash happened a little while ago, but it is involving four cars. So we're hoping that everything will clear here in a little bit. Now, this is a real tough spot. 60 westbound side at the 57 and getting reports of a spin-out crash. You see that there are some minor delays here, the same for the 71 and the 57. So it does look like, for us anyway, that there's some heavy rain along this stretch of both the 60 and the 57 freeways. Hopefully, we'll see some light conditions, at least in terms of it being Monday. But, of course, we will see some uh, major crashes and that kind of stuff because of the rain. We'll see on top of our outstanding sig alerts. Continue to track the drive for everyone. I'll send it over to you guys. Hold on a second. All right, Ginger, thank you. Despite the storm, the 66th Annual Grammy Awards win. Yeah, Grammy Awards. I'm doing weather. So this is all to know. Uh, on occasions, we will get some strong storms coming through. That's affecting us a great deal. <coughs> Even Hollywood has to adapt to adverse weather conditions by tenting up um, outside unless they had the Grammys somewhere else. I'm not quite sure where they had the Grammys at. But getting back to the Google Maps that we have at this point over here. I know, I'm drawn out and boring, but I wanted to get let you know. I am centering the uh, Lake Balboa area, or as I called it, the Sepulveda Dam area. Streets that they have in the area, they shut down like crazy. Um, Balboa would be the uh, north and south barrier of it. So they close it off on Victory and Balboa all the way through Victory and Burbank area. Going east, all the way over to the 405 is the barrier hugging that curve and there are isolated spots along the 405 area that do get flooded because of topography and they will shut down access to Burbank and Sepulveda area going south a little bit They'll shut the entire street of uh, Oxnard, I think. Or is that Burbank? Yeah, Burbank actually going through it. And they'll, they'll shut it down all the way over to the, from the west to the east. Because that's the entire area that gets flooded out, including the park. Now, there's only businesses in there and maybe some residents. That hugging along the the 101 freeway, they won't get as flooded as much, but they usually get at some of it. And there are some homes in the area, right along Burbank Boulevard. They call it an industrial area over there, but there's only certain areas that they actually would have industrial areas next to residential. <laughs> but even those areas are almost subject to flo flooding if it really gets bad enough. But the way that the, the valley, the um, Sepulveda Dam is, it's like a bowl. It's a basin. You fill it up much, and it will be flooded. But they have controls in there built in. Not mechanical, but natural. That guides the water into the L.A. River that we have going through it. Now, if you would happen to scroll closer to where it says the LA River if you happen to see that flashing on your screen notice what it is in there we have rooted systems of trees deep seated roots that will hold um, basically through the ground 
not concrete, but through the ground itself. You know, the root systems will hold up the dirt in there. They're not going to allow any kind of deterioration in there. At least none that I've heard of on over living in that San Fernando Valley. And I've lived there for 38 years. 68 all the way through 2005. So I grew up in there. That was my home. Not in the Riverway, but in San Fernando Valley itself. Okay. So every time we would get major storm systems, I mean the ones that we were actually tracking on the Dopplers and we're really getting indications that they're going to be major soakers, they shut down areas. They know that certain streets will get flooded. That's why we have parking enforcement out there. There was concern on the internet from one poster on, on the tubes about California, about how we're dealing with, cal with flooding issues. And I sent a video to the gentleman. We know we got this. And I've already said and explained before that when we get when we get uh, fire season going on and we have burnout areas, we have fire departments and city planners and county, sorry, back edges a little bit. They know. They're aware of it. They tell the residents what's going on. So our media keeps them informed. If they have radio, they've got, they'll hear the radio stations out there broadcasting the information. And the local media talks about it as well. If you happen to go online and you happen to see the uh, live view, uh, viewing of it, you'll catch our local stations. ABC7, CBS, uh, KCAL, Los Angeles covers both uh, CBS Channel 2 and then Channel 9. ABC7 is, well, is the ABC network out there in the first place. They will also give you traffic update information on what's happening. Yellow means we have cautionary areas. Red, they're going to shut it down left and right. Sick alerts. Even some of the marine, even some of the marinas, we have concerns about a little bit. Uh, the streets in the area may get flooded out a little bit. PCH, up and down the coastline, they're still worried about as well. So, uh, as for worrying about this whole flooding situation, I'm worried about it because once it reaches the Antelope Valley. Yeah, right now on Channel 5, they're talking about uh, there are certain hillsides that get flooded out. As I said before in some of my other videos concerning about uh, the San Fernando Valley and about the fire situations, we have mud flow. We have debris coming down the hillsides. If the, if the hillsides are super saturated, they will have mud flow. It doesn't matter if it's coming from this particular storm or previous storms. Even after the storm, we'll have the mud flows happening because the ground will be super saturated and lubricated. And we'll see the debris coming down and people won't expect it. They know it's going to happen, but they hope it won't happen. They'll put up the sand blocks, uh, sandbags over the, over the place. In certain areas, uh, if the city and county actually approves, uh, for emergency reasons, they'll put up K-bars. You know, um, separations that you would see on the highways. Well, they'll use that for flood control. But certain areas that you'll never hit, I actually you'll never see coming, and they've already got it in certain uh, in certain hillsides in Studio City that they're getting red tagged left and right. Yellow tag means it's, you know, it may be, it may not be habitable, but red tag, no way in hell you're going to be living in that place. No one goes in there. <coughs> so they're showing portions of, right now, in Studio City, in the hillsides itself, in the Santa Monica Mountains that we have. People love to live in the, in the hillsides because it's mountain, it's, it's region, it's nature, it's wonderful. We also have animals out there that are searching for places to live. 
They're always in constant con uh, you know, conflict with live out there. Uh, there we go. Sun Valley again. Different uh, location. That's some... Um, oh, Kerr Hawkins this time. Okay. So he's going to be talking about weather. He's going to be talking about other things. But he's also talking about streets. I'm going to turn it on right now. Latona Canyon Road. Oh, LAPD. certain areas again this is not excuses i'm not trying to make excuses but forecasting weather in southern california our forecast area is larger than most states so um you know if my job was to just forecast weather in what would be a normal say just santa barbara county we could spend three minutes and just focus and we could really get into it we may not even talk about riverside in San Bernardino counties because it would be another state or it would be another station's duty in that area. So we have to do all of this. And again, not an excuse, but this is why we tend to see larger numbers here. My job is to give you that worst case scenario so you're not caught off guard. So when we say one to three inches of rain, that one inch of rain most likely for today is going to be in through L.A. and Ventura County. That three, four, possibly five inches of rain is where the atmospheric river is lined up, and that is fueling that storm. Without the atmospheric river, this would be a good storm, but it wouldn't be a storm that we would be talking about as far as epic rainfall amounts. But we are because we're fueling L.A. County and Orange County with a lot of extra water vapor that is turning into rain and snow as it travels up the mountains. And you can see the radar imagery. So these areas are at greatest risk. We also have the possibility of thunderstorms or an outlying cell that moves through Ventura or Santa Barbara counties that could create at least some isolated flooding in isolated areas. So 
most of you will be fine in a sense that you're not going to find landslides, mudslides, or maybe even flooding in your area. But we have a number of areas that will, around Malibu, up towards the foothills. These are intense cells moving through. We don't see red. It's certainly a dark burgundy like this. So that tells us we are seeing inches of rain that is falling per hour. Now, typically cells don't sit over an area, so when it's all said and done, it may just be a half an inch to an inch of rain in a short amount of time, but that is a quick runoff, saturated ground, so it puts us at risk. We have other areas where we're seeing that. So Orange County, uh, L.A. County, western sections of Riverside, San Bernardino, you will be on the higher ends of things in San Diego County as well. Those of you on the outlying areas, it's a typical winter storm for us, a decent one. So you may come back and say, eh, a lot of talk, very little action as far as that we can handle an inch of rain. But again, we're still seeing this setup. This is where the atmospheric river is. The storm is still sitting to the north and offshore. This is all being fueled in to the system. Now, later today, the area of low pressure itself catches up to it. That's when the snow levels drop, and that's when we'll see the abundance of snow and we'll see our snow levels drop. So some of you up in the mountains at five, 6,000 feet say, where's the snow? That's coming a little bit later. Even in through the evening hours, we still have pockets of heavy rain, and this accumulation will put many roads at risk. So if you could sit out the morning commute, Maybe you don't have to go into work early. You can work from home or whatever the case may be. Do it. Just be on the safe side. The roads are tough. And remember, you may be fine with your driving, but it's others that feel like, hey, I've got a truck, I've got an SUV, or I've got this, I'm safe, whatever. And it's so easy to spin out. Ginger talks about this all the time. It does not take a lot of water, and we will get a lot of water, especially as we went through the forecast map. You could see the intensity of the rain picking up through L.A. and Orange County and the IE. Remember? These are computer generated, so the computer is taking in everything that it's gathering as far as the weather conditions, and that is why those areas are going to see more rain. The Inland Empire, you are one of them. Temperatures taking a back seat. A couple things of note, Ginger, before I send it back over to you that I didn't even have a chance to talk about. Extremely strong winds, especially in through parts of Orange County and the foothill areas, parts of L.A. County. We could see water spouts. This has the potential to spawn some smaller tornadoes. I'm not suggesting it will happen. But we have seen a couple of them in the last year, so uh, everything's on the board today as a possibility, including snow. We'll send it over to you. Yeah, I mean, that's all important information for sure. And we know that wind advisories have been issued a little bit farther north of where we are for our friends and areas of Lebec. I believe we have Dry 5, and this would be our Eric Spillman's crew, because one thing we know for sure that he was in the Beverly, um, he was looking at La Brea Avenue right at Stalker, where it's closed. He's made great time, him and his crews, as they, of course, are headed over to or already on Beverly Glen. And this is one of those spots that we talked about earlier where really it may be best to stay on the freeways. A lot of people like to cut through and use Beverly Glen to get through areas of the west side, Beverly Hills, up in towards the San Fernando Valley, and then coming points to the south, but you can see what the conditions are like. May not be the best bet to do that, and you can see, though, there are the areas where we're seeing some of that uh, mudslide as well as, of course, a little bit of that rain. The other thing would be, you know, I wouldn't take Mulholland if I can avoid it. Laurel Canyon, those streets are also going to be very challenging as they continue to make their way up on Beverly Glen. This is going to be a rough ride for the general commuter. We appreciate you guys putting up the shot so we can see what it looks like and why we're telling people to stay off the roads. And, of course, look at some of the flooding that has developed here as well. Let's move you over to some of the other things that we have going on. A great camera to show you how tough those conditions are Devore. for our friends traveling the stretch of the 215 at Devore Road. Devore, man, that was flooded in areas yesterday. Mm. Very tough there. This Sigler, outstanding Sigler continues until further notice. 14 North. Past Soledad Canyon Road, carpool left lanes are still blocked. It was a water tanker truck that ended up crashing into the center divider. You know, this is not a surprise. It was the same spot as we had mud, dirt, debris flow, large boulders. Now we have it again, Malibu Canyon Road between Payuma over to Bob Potter Drive. So they have that shut down again. Same spot as last week, okay? 101 Freeway, the southbound side at Lancashire. It flooded earlier. They stopped lanes to clear it. Flooding again. Most of the cars that ended up crashing here cleared to the shoulder, but they hydroplaned, which tells us flooding remains. It also tells us dangerous conditions. 60 West at the 71 at crash has a couple of those cars in lanes as well. So those are the areas where the drive is still really tough because of the way the weather moved through, right? The roads are still wet. I'll send it back to you guys. Okay, keep this in mind. This
This is what I'm getting from uh, KTLA Channel 5. So this is going to be delayed, but this gives you an indication of when we do get rain coming in. It's not, sometimes it's light, and then in February, March, that's when we expect the heavy stuff to come in. This is the heavy stuff coming in. And yes, everybody is concerned because of flooding in, area, in other areas. So, I am going to turn this one off, turn on the next video, send that one out to you as well.